So to that, uh, I'm going to present now another project of that. Uh, first of all, I also didn't say, well, I come from Madrid, but I, I work in Leeds in, in Munich, at the Technical University of Munich. And I work at Rust Lab, that some of you may know, uh, with Professor Volker Ross. And first of all, I wanted to do a mini introduction to the stuff that we do. Mostly we work on tools that take protein sequences and we do machine learning predictions, different ones. And one of the most important tools that we have is predictprotein.org, which has been a service, uh, a web service open for since 1992, one of the very first in, in the biomedical domain. So. And for example, you, you, you just can put here any amino acid sequence and predict and or give an example. I did that for now. And we put on the interface different prediction results from the from machine learning methods and an overview overall of the uh, of the protein. For example, hope it's gonna be fast enough. This tool will predict the effect of mutations. Let's see if it's fast enough. Yes. So we have here the sequence. And for example, we will try to see whether a point mutation in the sequence has an effect in the overall function. Just saying whether it changes the function, yes or no. So for that, we have we actually try for every single position all the 20 amino acid changes, possible mutations, and we see whether they have a mutation which we indicate in red. I mean, sorry, an effect which we indicate in red, or otherwise in green doesn't have a, an effect. Or also we have another prediction tool whether that we get the, the, the protein sequence and we predict what is the subcellular localization for that protein, whether it's in the in the nucleus, for example, here, or whether it's in other compartments. And and, and then again different tools that we have uh, for predictions. Then also there's stuff that we were on and I was excited before to hear the BioJS project because we also collaborate a lot with, with this in, in submitting components that are visual and some of those components are, are here released. For example, this is one of ours. And, and this is also about making components reusable for, for the community. Good, so now I'm gonna talk about the projects that I have yeah, this. And this is one corpus that we are actually in the moment developing. Uh, and the author's main author is actually my student, Ashish Bakudana. I am actually a PhD student, so he's doing his master with me, master thesis, and I'm his supervisor. So we are developing this corpus of annotating transcription factors entities related to, well, GGP, typically genes. And the approach that we're following is a semi-automatic one. We are, we are here to get the Gatlin's. We are, oh, and this looks like this, for example. So the gene or GGP will be green and, and transcription factors will be in pink. And what we do is this semi, oh, sorry, semi-automatic approach of first, the document selection. We go for uniprot entities that are annotated with this specific code term. I don't know if you can read it, but it says transcription factor activity sequence specific DNA binding. So we filter those, all the uniprot entities that have that. And then all of those uniprot proteins, we check for the citations that they have, whether have the, the, the words, the keywords interaction with, sorry if you cannot read it, but that, that's what we do. So we are trying to filter those documents that indeed have a transcription factor mentioned there, and indeed has some indication of relationships between between the entities. So we have those documents, and then we just then do a random selection of those documents. At what we do next to actually get the proteins or GDPs, we run this <laughs> tool called Genome Plus. Some of you may know is we did different analysis, and and we saw so far that it's running the best with the best performance. And then also for the transcription factors, because they are indeed, um, they are indeed, um, I mean, uh, GGPs as well, and annotated by uh, Genome Plus. <laughs> we check the names, so we get the entrance gen gene ID from Genome Plus, and we map it to Uniprot, 
ID. We don't have so many problems with that mapping. It works more or less well. And in those Uniprot entities, we again check of this code term, whether it's a transcription factor. And if it is, we automatically mark it as a transcription factor. And then actually, then we put those, uh, those annotations that we have created automatically, we actually push them to DuckDuck, which is the question that you mentioned before. And, and indeed, we are doing this for, for this. And then manually, now it's the manual part, of whether, first of all, checking whether those automatic annotations were correct, and if we have problems, we fix them. And also, then we do the relationship annotation, whether a gene is binding to a transcription factor. So that's what we're doing. More or less, well, the guidelines summaries, the description of the guidelines are here selected. But then also with this, we are annotating every, everything publicly, the, the annotations, guidelines. And we, think, we have things like, basic things like always annotate the long term and abbreviation separately. And other more specific things, whether we, when we mean that a relation is actually meaningful and established. So hopefully detailed enough for other people to, to, to read. And that's pretty much it. So in the hackathon, our job is going to be to convert it to different formats, pop annotation or open annotation, to again make, make this uh, resource more useful. Last year, or well, actually in Bla one we presented the other corpus log text that we have already experience in doing this. And yeah, that's what we want to do for this course. Thanks. Thank you.